we're going to start by creating a new 3D scene called Scope. Adding our model, which is going to be on GitHub, along with the Scope Shader. And we'll add another Node 3D for the Display Nodes and Logic, which will include a Remote Transform 3D for the camera, Mesh Instance 3D for the shader, and two viewport nodes, one for the reticle and one for the scopes camera. For the reticle view, it's incredibly important that we enable transparent backgrounds so that we can see past the reticle. It's going to be a node 2D scene, which we will rename to reticle, right click, and save as scene. The reticle scene, we can add align 2Ds, add two points each, 512 divided, 512 is the default viewport size, and so we can position them accordingly. I'm going to save the scope scene into the scope folder. And for scope view, we're going to add a camera 3D. I'm going to zoom it in just a little bit for the f effect. Go to our remote transform 3D and set it to our camera. Move our remote transform 3D just in front of the mesh. Now we're going to add the shader by adding a quad mesh, moving it to the rear of the scope. Just to start with, we're going to move it past. And it's very important that the geometry is close to the final size of the scope radius, otherwise it will not work. And we're going to use this to check the... See how it's over clipping through less on this side? That means the mesh is not centered with the scope, which for aesthetic purposes, functionality purposes, I'm going to correct as best I can. And then we will go to Geometry, Material Override, Shader Material. Set it local to scene so that we can use viewport textures. Quick load our scope shader. And you can see it's a little square in there, just because we haven't set any of the textures yet. We'll open the shader parameters for the reticle texture, viewport texture, reticle view, scope texture, viewport texture, scope view. And now we can begin to see through it. If you're too close or too far away, you won't be able to see through it, which is uh, the point of the effect. And for the scope radius, we'll hold shift on our keyboard and click and hold on this and gently move it so that it's just being on the inside and nowhere else. And increase our reticle depth, which will push our parent scope deeper into the model, or it'll give that effect at least. As you can see now, we've got scope shadow that changes depending on our distance, side to side and our closeness, front to back to the actual model. Next, we're going to set up the model and the, uh, the scope lenses to basically increase the fidelity of the effect. So what we're going to want to do is go over to the scope model, right click editable children, and we're going to create two new materials. I'm going to create a new resource uh, derived from standard material. We're going to call this gray and save it as a material. You can save it as any. It's just preference for me. Only thing we're really going to do is make it gray. Big surprise, I know. But then we can take the material and drag it onto these different parts to just to get a nice kind of uniform look. Now we're going to set up the material for the front rear lens. What we're going to do first is we're going to take our mesh instance and push it just beyond the rear lens mesh instance so that uh, we can get an overlaid and reflective uh, surface here that is transparent. 
First thing we're going to do is going to go to Material Override, Standard Material, Save As, Alas. We're going to make it transparent by enabling Alpha. Set the albedo to a black with a slight transparency. In real life, you're always going to lose a bit of a light to the abyss, so it's best to simulate that effect. And better scopes can have less loss and worse scopes can have more. Then we're gonna to go to metallic and set it to 1.0 metallic with 0.5 specular. Go to clear coat and enable it with zero roughness in 1.0 clear coat. Add a noise texture 2D with a fast noise light, which will enable us to get a little bit of a, a dirt effect on the lens, which you can see if I adjust sun. Now you see there's a bit of a smudginess to the glass, and you can adjust that by adjusting the clear coat or the fast noise, uh, but I do like this quite a bit. And that is quite a nice effect for the rear side of the scope. What we're gonna do for the front is we're gonna go to the body lens rear. Uh, we're gonna copy this material, go to the front lens, material override, paste, right click, make unique because we're gonna change these settings so we don't want it to carry over to the rear lens. All we're gonna do is disable transparency. Transparency is expensive and we don't really want people to see into our scope because it's just going to be uh, weird meshes. It's basically gonna look like this if it's transparent, which we don't want them to see, but we also want to reflect on the front of the scope. One quirk of the viewports that you should be aware of is the HDR 2.0, uh, which as you can see, uh, the settings I've given you so far have led to the viewports being overly bright, which is quite confusing, and this reticle in here looking pink instead of red. Well, if you go to each of the viewports and you select Use HDR 2.0, it does seem to fix these issues and have the uh, images appear as more correct. That concludes this tutorial. At the end section here, I'll just have a couple of shots of me using the scope and VR. Uh, big shout out to the Godot XR Tools, which has a scope setup similar to this. They don't have a reticle or any of the scope shader effects, but they did show me how to do essentially that the scope setup with the camera and the remote transform. Very helpful to just figure out where to start on this uh, whole thing. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Kinks in the description for the GitHub and the shader. Um, everything's under MIT, so you can use the model scope shader for everything as long as you follow the license. Thank you, bye!